Good afternoon. I want to thank you for taking the time to come and hear me share my passion with you. I hope that this will be an inspiring hour and I am going to talk really fast uh, just because I have so much to share and everybody has a little bit different section of information that they want to understand or know. If there's anything I can't answer for you I will be available upstairs at the booths and um, we have some interesting innovation that we're sharing. Oh, so do you need me to speak louder? Okay. So, <clears throat> please interrupt me if you can't hear me. Just do this. <laughs> okay, I, I really want to connect with everybody. And so, if my voice drops, just give me the audio, the signs, please. So, I've been practicing dentistry for 40 years. It's a crazy number of years, and yet I still love what I do. I'm passionate about it. Every day is like a new day. And I'm constantly learning and growing. I uh, try to... Uh, take as much information from the outside world and bring it into dentistry of how the mouth body connects and I'm always growing and uh, I love to take the technology that's available today so that we can achieve minimally invasive dentistry because my goal is you ought to have your teeth until 120 years of age. Um, there's no reason why your smile can't be as beautiful as it is today or even more beautiful by 120. So I'm going to go through a series of lots of information so that you can see what I look at and what are the important factors of how you can modify and be aware for you. And hopefully uh, it will be a worthwhile time for you to be here. Uh, so last year, I was in February, I went to Africa and I uh, did a give back program with the Maasai people. And I just decided I wanted to share this picture of this little girl who smiled, who was so beautiful. Even though she had a brown stain, because in Africa, in certain areas in Kenya, they have a lot of fluoride in their natural water system. So a lot of children, even though they have beautiful, wide, gorgeous teeth, because they has not been unadulterated through sugars, uh, have brown stains on their teeth. But look at the beautiful smile that she has. And I'm going to talk about why smiles are so important. And it's not an aesthetic. It's not a frou-frou. There's so many other reasons that smiles are important that we'll discuss. So we are going to be talking about a new way of thinking, minimally invasive dentistry. And Albert Einstein said that the significant problems we face cannot be solved at the same time that we created them. And so for that reason, I don't want my clients who come to see me, and I say clients because we work together rather than, you know, doctor heal me. It's always like I may see that person two times a year. However, they have the other 363 days that they do whatever they do, right? And I can't be in charge of that. But if I can give education to my clients about what's important, then they'll be able to sustain and maintain. And I don't want to recreate something. I want them to keep their own because that's the healthiest and best. I can't recreate what God gave us. I can resolve it and get things into better situations sometimes, but why do I even have to do anything at all? I wouldn't want to celebrate that everything is stable. So the human mind, once stretched by a new idea, never regains its original dimensions. And that's my hope for you at the end of this hour. So here we have a picture of Mona Lisa. And Mona Lisa, as we know, is very famous. But do you notice that she smiles with her lips together? So I have the question to ask you. Is that because A, she's shy? Or B, does she have a secret? Or C, was it considered rude and vulgar in the 1500s to open your mouth and smile because of decay and rampant gum disease and smelly mouths? Or D, is it all of the above? So for sure, I know it is C, that in those days, it was considered rude and vulgar to be able to open your mouth and smile and laugh. And I say to you, like, can you imagine living in those days and never being able to open yourself up and smile and laugh and with wild abandonment and just, you know, be who you want to be rather than inward? How are you ever going to get really great connections in this world? So it all begins with education, as I said, and I want to be able to share that. And that it's always an informed choice. So I say to my clients that come to my office, or patients, I say to them, you know, no matter what I'm going to tell you, 
I will always have different solutions. It doesn't have to just be one way. There's always different solutions that we can have to get you to a better place. So this is what we're going to talk about today. So first of all, the mouth-body connection. I was always intrigued about it when I was in dental school, and I always wanted to make sure that I would understand that the mouth was not just a specific part here, but that we are fully integrated. And so over the years, I amassed my edu information, and I wrote a book called Your Mouth, the Gateway to a Healthier You. It's a yoga-based approach, exploring the connections between health, whole body wellness, and longevity. And in it is just lots of information, and my gift to you for being here, if you're interested, if you give us your email address, we will send you an e-book if you want it as a uh, PDF file or a, um, an iPad style, just let us know, and I'll be happy to send it to you. So I have a saying, it's called ZT for BG, which is zero tolerance for bleeding gums. You know how they say zero tolerance for drunk driving? Well, instead of the DD, I have the BG. And the reason why is, is because today we know that the bacteria in the mouth can affect our whole body in different ways. And this ought to be a closed system where there are no open doors for bacteria to infiltrate in. And they are finding that bacteria is involved in our heart. They're finding bacteria, oral bacteria, are actually in pancreatic cancers, in esophageal cancers, lung issues. Uh, it's all over, and the latest is they're finding it in the biopsies of Alzheimer's patients. So when they look at the lesions in Alzheimer's patients in their brains, they actually find this bacteria that looks like this. And this is called oral spirochetes, and spirochetes are like little corkscrews, and if you looked at it under live microscopy, you would see that there's a, it's undulating, it's always moving and kind of wiggling around and moving around. So how does that, the mouth, end up getting the bacteria to get up into the brain, like it's mind-boggling to me. And yet, you know, we just don't need to have any contamination. Our mouth is meant to be able to allow us to speak, to talk, communicate, swallow, chew our food, but it is not meant that the bacteria in our mouth should go throughout the rest of our body. So. We do, if I just back up, we actually do now, when we see that we have bleeding gums, we actually have a test called the oral DNA test. And what that will do is tell us the abundance of different bacteria in our mouth, whether it's over the threshold or not. And we use it with a little soft pick. I, you probably know those. Those are little, little bristle brush, uh, blue sticks that you buy at the drugstore, the disposables, and you can clean between your teeth. But if there's bleeding, it means it's infecting into our body. And so then we have protocols on how we can help have that zero tolerance for bleeding gums. So I'm really excited. And the company that actually does the oral DNA testing throughout North America is, one of, is actually based in Toronto, and it's one of the most four-leading um, laboratories to give us this information. So I'm incredibly proud of them. Valscope examination is another test that we do at in our initial exams. And what it is, it's a blue light that detects abnormalities at what we call the basement membrane of the uh, tissues. So even though it looks vis visibly, the tissues look healthy, this little blue light will dis tell us whether or not there's any disruption. Whoops. Um, let me just go back here. It doesn't want to. Um, if there's any disruption, and in which case we can kind of detect it at an earlier uh, late stage and uh, make sure that everyone stays healthy because oral cancer is on the rise and I'm very sensitive to it because a close family my member of mine who never smoked never drank of any excess ended up getting an oral cancer and it was 35 chemo uh, radiation therapies um, three major chemotherapies um, feeding on uh, the stomach uh, tube for six weeks and the crazy thing is is afterwards when we saw her through dry mouth, there were like about 50 cavities. Like it was just astounding. And I knew I was being trained for the past 35 years of my life to look after this one case. And we've averted her needing root canals or any extractions of her teeth. But this kind of stuff I wouldn't wish on anyone. So I have a really strong passion to make sure that nobody should ever have this watched. And also how we can help people with dry mouth have a somewhat functional life. It's not an easy task, and uh, yet we, we're all kind of getting involved in dry mouth as we age, and sometimes through medications as well. So I say like a fish always needs water to swim in. A mouth 
needs saliva to keep the teeth pliable and healthy and uh, remineralized. So, one of the other areas of dentistry is sleep apnea, and you say, what does that have to do with the mouth? But what we find is, is that the mouth is not in its ideal shape, then often uh, we can uh, have sleep apnea because the tongue is positioned in a different way because there isn't enough room from crowding of arches, and we're going to talk more about this. But it's a very interesting process that if you have mild to moderate sleep apnea, it can often be reversed through dentistry or through an oral appliance rather than necessarily the CPAP machine. And I advocate the CPAP machine because it's 100% oxygen that gets forced into our body, but we don't have a lot of compliance with it all the time. And a lot of people travel and don't have traveling machines. So if we could find a way that we can help people have a healthier mouth and a better reshaped mouth and or an oral appliance that they wear at night, then we have a better chance of having quality sleep. Because as, we, as I know, and I'm sure you do, because I know how educated this group is that's with me, is, is that sleep is probably the most important thing beyond exercise and beyond diet. If we don't have a good quality sleep, we don't reset our body, we don't recharge our whole system, and we don't allow ourselves to have quality of energy the next day, nor memory control, and it affects so many of our endocrine systems, high blood pressure, gout, it just goes on and on and on. So when we look at this man, you can see that he has actually this um, machine that's actually activating his, uh, or measuring him for a, a home sleep test, but all of a sudden he's kind of choking a little bit. And then he kind of wakes himself up. And then he kind of goes into a quiet sleep again. And he's breathing through his mouth, not his nose. When you breathe through our mouth, we only get 80% oxygen. So here he's breathing normal. You can see that there's a space for the air to come in and to come out. But when the tongue moves backwards where those blue arrows are showing, all of a sudden he can't breathe. So the brain says, wake up, wake up. And all of a sudden he starts choking. And this is a sign of sleep apnea. And then he goes back to sleep. And it's a, it's, that's a process, and many people don't even know they have it. What I tell my patients is if you snore, then there's a chance that you do have sleep apnea, because when we snore, the tongue goes to the back of our throat. So on your phone, there's an app called Snore Lab. And if you do it, and you think, do I snore or don't I snore? They say I snore, and I don't think I really do snore. You can just turn the Wi-Fi the wi off, put it on sleep mode, airplane mode, and activate your... Uh, little app called Snore Lab, and when you wake up in the morning, you can actually see how loud you snored, and you actually get an audio recording. So you know that the iPhone has no vested interest in, in who you are or what you are. It just gives you the data. So it's an interesting way just to check. So let's talk about sexy smiles. And I, I don't mean to be flipped that this is just an aesthetic point of view, but we get sexy smiles when we actually have healthy mouths. And it used to always be about the eyes. They always said, Sophia Loren has the most beautiful eyes. But now they all say, look at, at the Oscars, they said, look at Renee Zellweger. Let's just see what her smile looks like. Rather than, let's see what jewelry she wears. Because the whole world looks at smiles now. And you'll see that there's branding of so many different companies. They always use smile. And it always used to be like dentists would say smile. But now the whole world is embracing smile because that's no, how we communicate. And it's, we know that when we smile, we actually create internal endorphins, which is happiness. And when we're happy, we're healthier. So the fountain of youth is your smile. And if we widen the scaffolding, as I've already alluded to, with the widening of being able to have room for your tongue for breathing, and you allow your soft tissue to drape, then you begin to look younger. So we look at this picture of Jennifer Aniston, and she's on the cover of People and all the you know, magazines that talks about who's doing what. But why is she always on the cover? And I promise you that if she didn't have a beautiful smile, she wouldn't be on the cover. But what makes that a beautiful smile or an appealing smile? Well, first of all, the teeth match the whites of her eyes. Number two, it's a wide, broad smile. So we know that she probably breathes fairly well. Number three, her teeth fill in all the crevices, all the space, like where her lips are. You see her skin, her lips, and then her teeth. There's no black, dark hallways that we'll talk about. Number four, the angulation of the front teeth all follow her lip line. So it gives her a very pleasing and inviting look. 
So I had already talked to you about that the Oscar is your smile is your best accessory, and these are the criteria that we just talked about as well. So here's the picture of an allure. I was walking through um, an airport and I just saw this, and I thought, see, when this girl smiles, you see her teeth. And as we get older, our upper lip moves down and our bottom lip moves further down. And sometimes you look at people and they're talking and say, "Do they have teeth or don't they have teeth?" But if you have teeth that have a display, or we call it a reveal, then you're going to look younger. So let's look at this girl. Look how beautiful she is. This was my first appointment. She she did a few things over time, but. It didn't really matter, you know, that the color was a little yellower. It didn't matter that she had a white speckle. She just looked beautiful because why? She had a broad, white smile. Her lip, her teeth followed her lip line. But there's a sense of purity that comes through. Of you'd like to talk to this girl. She looks warm and gentle and kind. But if she didn't have those teeth in that way, you may not want to fixate your eyes on her as much and really get to know her because there's a diversion. So. Here's a lady, and she was actually 92 when she came to see me. And she was with my practice for about four or five years, and then she passed, unfortunately. But I just loved the way she looked. She had a beautiful young smile. Yes, there were some issues there, and but it's it wasn't. You could see her teeth. Number one, two, they had a sparkle. And see, she had what we call the proper vertical dimension. She had space, like between her nose and her chin. It wasn't all shriveled up like an apple core because she's kept her teeth in the proper alignment. And she was incredibly intelligent and wonderful. And、um, you know, I, she was very proud, had a sense of pride about her.、Um, and so, there's no reason, with us knowing what we know today, that all of us can't have this when we're 94 and 96. And this is what I aspire to. Because believe it or not, changing smiles changes lives, and it's not just the good looks, but as I said, form and function. So this woman came to see me, and we did some orthodontics. And we today I do it all through Invisalign, and we'll be talking a little about it. And、um, we were looking. I have for all my patients lots of photos. We take photos of their smiles, their teeth, their full face, and we watch how things go over time, progress. And we have their X-rays there, and we were just checking her X-rays, and I, these pictures popped up. And I said, "Oh, I said, remember what when I first met you, and look at you now." And she said, "Yes." She said, "I always thought my eyes were the problem, but when you fixed my teeth, I realized my eyes weren't the problem at all." So, isn't it interesting how we hold our facial smile? That's what she thought her best smile was before, but as things unraveled and she felt confident, her whole facial shape changed. And I just think, like, wow, that's a huge opportunity for her to engage in the world and to be able to have the confidence. And this girl was found at、um, Tim Hortons in, by a modeling agent, and he took her to international、uh, um, acclaim. And he brought her to us and said, "What can you do? It's limited budget. We don't have a lot of money,、um, but she needs her teeth looked after because she would never smile with showing her teeth and like a Mona Lisa." And、uh, so we、uh, did some bonding. We did a little bit of whitening, and that was the difference we got. It isn't perfect, and there are certain things that I would definitely change. But she wrote us a little note saying, "Thank you so much for the gift of confidence that your hard work and generosity has given me. I'm smiling now, and I'm." I'm in Paris now and smiling a, a way every day, and this was her pictures of what she is doing now. But do you think she would ever get this opportunity if it was always a closed smile? So just think of what is offered her the opportunity of being able to engage in life and and to actually be able to commu- communicate with people. So this is an unravelled and balanced smile, and even though I'm showing you aesthetics, I'm going to show you why it's important for our whole body in a few minutes. But again, we can unravel without extractions. Seldom, seldom do I ever extract teeth. But look, all of a sudden, how the face is more level. And if the face is level, can you imagine what it does for our whole physiological structure? If we, our head is always tilted because we think that's the best way we look, how does that build in interferences into our whole body? So there's a whole area of study in dentistry called neuro,、um, uh, well, it's chirodontic, and what chirodontic is is it's、uh, the chiropractic and the dental component, and so、uh, we like to be able to optimize the opportunity for people to have a, a balanced smile. 
and again, all of a sudden, can you see how the nose is a different shape? And believe me, we didn't do anything to the nose, we just did the teeth. But it was a virtual nose job at the same time, because everything was in a better balance. And her jaw was, it had the ability to come forward, which also helps her in her area. And the word I was searching for is neuromuscular. So uh, neuromuscular or chirodontic, it's uh, one and the same. And again, same picture. Before and after, you can see such a pointed chin, and then all of a sudden, a balanced chin. So the mouth is the most sophisticated chewing machine on this earth. So even though I showed you pretty smiles, it's really not about the prettiness, it's about the stability and longevity. And John Coyes is a, um, a mentor of mine, and I've done, in Seattle, and I've done his traditional nine courses, and then you do symposiums, you write exams, and I'll show you my case that I presented to be able to get to be a mentor, which I consider is a huge honor, to be able to work with other dentists to teach them what can be done. But it isn't about just fixing an individual tooth, it's about looking at the person and making sure we have stable foundations so that we can build upon. So here's a picture of a few cars. Now, if you had a car like this, rather than maybe your SUV that you drive on, on the farm roads or country roads or drive the kids to school, would you be looking after it any differently? And probably the answer is yes. You would take better care of it because it's a very special car and you know it's not easily replaceable. Well, we only get one set of permanent teeth. And it is just as important that we maintain it this way so that we can have teeth till we're 120. And it's just not to smile and look good, but to be able to eat and chew. So my parents are 92 and 96, soon to be 93, 97. And they actually live with me. And I am just so grateful that I can make one kind of meal and that they can enjoy that meal with me because they have their teeth. But that's their social event. They don't do much during the day, and I try to do as many coming togethers of friends and family that they know so that they have something, but they look at the table and they know that at sooner or later we're all going to sit down and eat together. And that is so much better for them to be able to be able to be in community. But if you sit there and you have to have something different than everyone else, that's not so good. So our goal is to be able to chew our food so we can actually digest our food and get the nutrients out of it. And out of it, they, the bonus is you get a beautiful smile and it's well balanced and physiologically you're in a better place. So here's the girl again, the, the difference before and after. And on the before you can see, you can't even see, you see those dark hallways? And then afterwards there aren't the dark hallways because we expanded. It's all about expansion and allowing the teeth to be in a better place. And then we replaced that one crown that wasn't so nice and that was her result. So when you look at her, can you see again the balance? These teeth are in a good position to be able to be stable without breakage, without um, fractures, without root canals, without crowns, without gum recession. They can be like that till she's 120. And this is a different case. This gentleman came in and he wanted to fix his teeth and straighten them because that's the best way to do it. But he came to see me and he said, you know what, something's changed when he came for his consult. My wife is pregnant, she's going to have triplets and we have to move to the East Coast because that's where our support system is. So okay, plan B, so we did some bonding. So we didn't get these teeth in their optimum position but what we did was give him a better smile so he felt more confident. Now, he was a police officer. So I'm asking you, if you had got pulled over by a police officer, which one would you rather talk to? But they also say that, you know, people the best smiles, they get the best jobs, they get the best dates. They actually, um, if you have to be in front of a jury, you're going to have a better uh, outcome. Because you remember the case about the snaggle tooth guy? Did you ever hear about that? I guess maybe because I'm in dentistry, but this one, guilty or not guilty, it's snaggle teeth, and so he just had everything going against him because the jury would look at him and kind of be frightened rather than thinking that maybe there's a way they could approach this man and he'd have some chance of rehabilitation. So it's always better to be able to be able to have a connection with people. And um, this woman, she uh, lived in Cape Breton and uh, she was in a monastery and she did a lot of meditation, but somehow she was offered this job in Toronto that she could be the villain in a movie. So at the end, the, uh, the director said, why don't you go to Dana, get your teeth fixed, because I can give you mo more movie parts. So 
she gave me a week to do it. And so there wasn't a lot I could do, but I did some bonding on the uh, right side where you can see there's the dark hallway. And we uh, fixed the darkness through some bonding and we did some whitening. And uh, that's what we got. And at the end of the week, we said, she looked at her teeth and she started crying. And she said, oh, I only wish I was as beautiful inside as I am outside. And I said, you are. You are totally beautiful. But it totally reflects a different person with a different energy and a different capability. And so these things give me just so much joy that this is what keeps me going in dentistry. And um, I have a lot more to discuss, and I realize I have a lot more case too many cases to show you like this, but this woman didn't like her smile, and then we changed it to before and after. But you can see how the head posture and everything changes, and her brightness and her alertness. And she actually looks 10 years younger, and that's what you see in all these pictures. People actually look younger, which is kind of crazy and amazing at the same time. So what is minimally invasive dentistry? Does it mean it is easier? Yes, sometimes it does. And it also means that we're aware of how not to set ourselves up. So my patients over the past 40 years have very few root canals, very few crowns. And I don't even make dentures for them because they don't need them. We keep them healthy. So by being able to be uh, proactive in the beginning of getting the foundation better, we have an opportunity of being able to do less dentistry. So this is a little video, it's a 17 second video of just how technology and everything has changed it. They have coordination, they know what they're doing, they have their little, their, their pressure gauges and everything that gives them accurate information, boom, 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 and off, they're off and running. That never used to be the case. But technology has brought us to a different world and a different timing. I mean, we know if we need information, what do we do? We ask Siri, and in you know, five seconds, we've got the information about what we need to know, rather than going to the Encyclopedia Britannica, pulling out the volume, looking through, and submitting 10 minutes. We've got it at our fingertips. And that's what innovation has done even with dentistry as well. So if we set the stage, we can have a whole different situation. And you can see how much younger this woman looks. And is all by expansion. You can see the dark hallways on the sides of her teeth before. And then we did two minimally prepped veneers on her front teeth because you could see that the teeth actually have fractures from the way they were positioned. You can see there's wear on the biting surface on the other picture. Uh, and when you look like onto the teeth. And so we modified them ever so slightly because we set it up that way when we did our Invisalign treatment so that we could create two beautiful veneers that were bonded onto her enamel, which is as strong as you can get. And nothing's changed. And you can see the bottom tooth that was hidden now comes out forefront. And she has a whole different level of health. So I work with ozone in my practice too, and ozone helps eliminate decay and remineralizes tooth structure. And I love ozone because it's helped me eliminate so many uh, residual decays or even nerve degenerations. And ozone kills bacteria, viral, fungal parasites, and penetrates into the tooth two, two to three millimeters. So it opens up the highways. If the highways are open, then guess what? The nerve doesn't have to fight battles. If the nerve doesn't fight battles, it's relaxed. If it's relaxed, it stays healthy, and we don't have degeneration. So my whole goal is be minimally invasive, give the tooth what it needs, and help it stay healthy. And so I've been working with lasers for the past 20 years. This was my, one of my first generation lasers that preps teeth as well as gum tissue. And now I work with a bio laser, radio laser, where I can actually cut off like irritations on tongues and stuff without local anesthetic. It's crazy great. And uh, so this is like my Ferrari of lasers. I absolutely love it. As a matter of fact, I do tongue ties for infants so that they can actually latch on to their mother's breast or the milk and they can thrive better and be able to speak. And the baby, you can do it all without local anesthetic and no post-op discomfort. So why water lays? Well, basically, you don't have to drill. It's not for all cases, but it's for quite a few cases. I use the laser on a daily basis. And so we eliminate the pain, the vibration, the micro fractures on teeth. So here is a chiropractor who came in to see me, and his force load wasn't too great. And we're going to be talking about force load in a minute. But you could see that the teeth were very ravaged. And if I mentioned to you that we're only supposed to lose a millimeter of teeth up to the age of 100. This guy at 30 has already lost two millimeters. He's 200 years old teeth for a 30-year-old, and that's crazy. So we ended up taking the laser, and 45 minutes later, this is what we got. We didn't have to do crowns. We didn't have to do veneers. We just rebonded the surfaces of the teeth by using the laser. It's painless, doesn't hurt a bit, no local anesthetic, no freezing, but we resurrected the teeth to a better position. 
Obviously, we haven't addressed the full cause. We've addressed the teeth of the issue, the issue of the loss of the wear of the teeth, but that's the next step of what we could do so that this person doesn't have to have expensive and aggressive dentistry. So today we have the age of implants, and implants are great, um, but they're not necessarily the be-all and end-all, but I fully embrace that we need to use it at different times, and I also believe that we need to keep our teeth as well. So I always want my patients to have stress-free mouth so they can have a stress-free body. And if you have a stress-free body, you're going to have a stress-free mouth. Because we are all, are all interconnected. When we are in our mother's womb, day 35 to 50 is when the mouth is formed. And when you think about it, the infant is in the, or the embryo, the head is in the center and then the body wraps around, right? It's all in a circle. So the mouth is really like the seeds of an apple. And so the seeds of the apple begin to give the information of the apple of how to form. Well, our body also gets that information of how it is to be formed. And so even though when we're born we become linear, it doesn't mean that the body doesn't forget, the body remembers. And so if the teeth is in stress, it radiates to the rest of our body, which is part of the chirodontic and uh, neuromuscular dentistry that I'm referring to. So we always want to make sure that we have a stress-free mouth, to have a stress-free body, to have a stress-free life. It's a cycle. But it's very, very important not to ignore this scenario. So I never want my patients to get to this point. But when teeth do change, you have to ask, why do teeth change? Is, why do they move? Is that because we're getting old? And the answer is no. They don't have to change. It's just, what is the force that we're putting on these teeth? And there's so many times that we grind and clench, and sometimes it's because the teeth just aren't in the right position, or maybe we need more airway. There's so many different factors of why, and sometimes we don't even know we do it. As Canadians, are you aware that sometimes you say A at the end of the sentence? And even though we don't think we do it, someone will say, oh, you're Canadian, eh? And, and you say, why did you know that? And they say, well, you said A at the end of the sentence. Well, it becomes an insidious habit. And grinding and clenching is just something that we're not even aware of as well. So I have this mantra, and it's at the back of my book, and it's throughout my book, and it's always about lips together, teeth apart. Teeth should never touch. And I know that sounds so weird and strange, and I wasn't taught that in dental school when I went through because we were concerned about keeping teeth healthy and having healthy gums, but we didn't talk about force loads, we didn't talk about any of this, or even how the muscles um, interact with the teeth. So in our office, we, talk, we do a lot about muscle releasing exercises because it isn't just the teeth. We're a whole ecosystem, right? And so we have a little video that I'm going to show you in a minute. But like bones, teeth are not meant to touch each other directly when you rest. And some people say, every time I swallow, my teeth touch. And I said, no, no, stop your jaw. It doesn't have to close. Um, but think of your vertebrae. If your vertebrae were touching, you would be in pain. We could be compressing the nerves and the blood vessels and everything. We don't want to have bones touching bones. We don't need the teeth touching teeth. The teeth are meant for kissing and smiling, biting into food and chewing. That's it. So when you really think about it, here's your teeth. Here's your top teeth, bottom teeth, in comes the food. Munch, 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 swallow. So what happened? The, teeth, the food was coming in, but you couldn't close your teeth all the way because your food was there, right? So your, food is glan your teeth are glancing off each other, but then the food goes down. So the teeth never really touch. So you can imagine if you had a room full of furniture, and you didn't have pizza parties, you didn't have overnights, you didn't have the kindergarten kids coming in to watch movies and have, or have kids, teenagers come have sleepovers, the furniture would look pretty good. If you had people come in and had casual conversation, and everything would probably be the same. But if there's a lot of force on the furniture, then you're not going to have the same furniture. And that's the same thing with teeth. Why do we have to put force on our teeth? And that's a, big, that's a big kahuna for me. So when we do have radiating pain, and we do clench our teeth, so you can see these teeth that are shadowed, and then you can see that there's a strong muscle there. There's a muscle here, and there's a muscle up here. And whenever you close on your back teeth, you actually activate this muscle, and you activate this muscle. And you can try it yourself. If you put your fingers here and close your teeth, you'll feel a muscle pop out, right? Yes? So at night, sometimes you wake up in the morning or midday, you have a headache. 
Some people get it, some people don't. Some people just feel a heaviness here. But why do you get headaches? We all taught it's normal, but it's not normal. But if you're at night and you're always clenching your teeth like this, you're activating your muscle. And if the muscle is closing up on your blood vessels, the blood flow doesn't happen. And guess what? You get a headache. So don't let the back teeth touch. And guess what? The muscles are calm. You have a wonderful quality sleep. And headaches are gone. Temporal headaches are not normal. It's only because you clench your teeth. So this, I just actually finished my MBA part-time at, at U of T, and um, I went to this lecture, and this lecturer was talking about uh, throwing rocks at the Google bus, and um, all of a sudden, I looked over, and, and look what this guy is doing. Do you see the muscle activated? He's not talking to anyone. He doesn't even know he's doing it. He's clenching his teeth. So what do you think is happening to those teeth? A huge amount of stress and force for him, unnecessary. We all, a lot of us do it, and we don't even know. So studies show that even light clenching over time can cause significant de uh, damage, and inflammation can cause muscle pain. And some people don't even know they do it, but you look at somebody with chubby cheeks, you know that they're doing it. And even some people just lightly clench and don't have chubby cheeks, they can do it. But we see so much damage that happens so early on that if we can only get the teeth in a happy position, they're not going to have any problems. And they're going to have a youthful and beautiful smile. So on my website, I have a video um, but with Jessica. It's on YouTube. It's facial exercises, three minutes and less. And we show people how to deal with the, the muscles as well. Because we, I've already shown you that if you bite your teeth, you cause muscle uh, discomfort. This, this is looking for pulse points. But we go through and actually do it in my book. It's there. And as I said, I'm happy to gift you an e-book. But the whole idea is, is we have to get rid of all the muscle tension that's stored. That's why we go for a, you know, a massage, right? I mean, you can have good posture, but if, if you don't get the kinks out of the muscles, they can never resolve themselves easily until you pull up, apart those muscles and get them into a better place. And then we can sustain and maintain by making sure it's lips together, teeth apart. So um, because of time movement, I'm moving on, or time limitations. Uh, so, and this was a, a phrase I decided to create called downward jaw. And that's where you put your fingers kind of on your lower jaw and pull down. And sometimes you just pull down, you feel, oh, that feels good. <laughs> so you know that you're actually compressing these muscles. And um, just there's different ways that we can do it that isn't so difficult or so hard. So you just get your fingers kind of at the corners of the jaw and just kind of pull down and forward and just hold it there. And all of a sudden you feel it release and oh, that feels a lot better. So there's so many areas that we can do to check in on ourselves to make sure that we're not doing damage because it's an insidious habit that we form. And in my book, I have five diagrams, but this is a scallop tongue. And I, as soon as I see people who come to see me and I look in their mouth, I already know that they may be clenching their teeth because the tongue has these ridges. And you say, well, why is that? But if you just close your teeth, and hold your teeth tight, 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 and just keep holding it tight, tight, tight. Now pay attention to where your tongue goes. And usually it spreads apart, right? So if you were to lie on a corduroy couch, you would see marks when you woke up after you had a sleep, right, on your skin. Well, similarly, you get marks from your scalloped tongue because you're t holding your teeth together. So this is what a scallop tongue looks like. So already I know this person's clenching their teeth. They don't even know they're doing it or holding their teeth together. And why are we doing it for? So people who grind their teeth at night without the protection of a bite plate destroy their fountain of youth. And that's what my book is basically about, is how to preserve your teeth to 120. And we talk about quality of sleep. We talk about grinding, clenching. We talk about the influence of bleeding gums. We talk about yoga for the mouth, exercises, and the kinds of foods we eat. But here's a picture of a little girl. And look at what they're doing with food. They're making smiles out of food. <laughs> Um, so it's just like everywhere. Here's serving up smiles since 1950. This is in Peterborough. It's my hometown. And you see that they talk about smiles. Then Minute Maid is in the corner. <laughs> so it, industry knows that smiles make people happy. And then they want to brand their, their product to good-looking teeth, good-looking smiles, because they know that it's 
That's the way we communicate these days. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I was listening to a lecturer, he's a VP of um, Nova Scotia Bank, and he said the study shows that 80 percent of millennials would rather visit a dentist than go to a bank. And I think, isn't that interesting? I'm not of that generation because it used to be scary and that's why I became a dentist. I thought dentists were mean sadistic people and I had to overcome my own fears and then maybe I could help others. So that's why I'm always looking for minimally invasive because that's what I would have wanted if I was out in the street. But these millennials, they haven't had the difficult times, right? They haven't had the big areas of decay. They've had, you know, more conscientious families and, you know, more routine dental care and maybe fluoride in the water that's helped them and different... Uh, you know, sealants on their teeth. And so they don't have the fear. And they also know they all want bright white smiles, right? Like it's in the drugstores, it's everywhere. And they've been taught that smiles are good for you. So they want to endorse that and keep it. Different than the generation I grew up in. So I always say, wear a bite plate, just like a seatbelt. Because when I see disturbances, they say, oh, I used to, but I don't anymore. I say, well, when you get in a car, do you put on a seatbelt? And they'll say, yeah. I say, well, why? Well, to protect, or, you know, you never know when. Well, when you go to sleep, you never know if you're going to have a deep sleep or a light sleep. You never know if you're going to have a, um, a good nightmare or, or a, a good dream or a bad dream. And you never know if you're going to grind or clench. So if you really want to keep your teeth and keep dental bills down and money in your pocket, wear your bite plate. And, but make sure it's a comfortable one. And I, another confession is this, is that I'm a gagger. I hate things in my mouth. And, you know, I just would rather not know. Like, I'd rather not have anything going on. And I don't want any de major dental work. And I don't like stuff in my mouth. So I created a bite plate that's a little bit lighter, kinder, and works with the whole physiology of the body. And it's, uh, this slide is cut off, but it's BPA-free. And it just really wraps on the outside between the teeth and the cheeks and wraps up underneath the gums. But the whole area around your tongue and the inside is no longer there. So it's not a horseshoe shape. And it allows people to keep their teeth with very little dentistry and no muscle spasm because the back teeth can't touch. So here's a picture, now that I've taught you so much, of a guy who had some problems, right? Look at all the wear he did on his front teeth. And it's only going to get worse. Because if you look at the lower front teeth, you see the gum line is higher than the back teeth. Because they've been worn and then the teeth migrate up. And then they get worn again. And then they migrate up a little higher, higher, higher. Until another 10, 15 years, he's not going to have any teeth there. And then what are we going to do for him? So... My goal here is, is to make sure that we can optimize the landscape so that he doesn't have these problems. And he said he would never take pictures, have him take pictures, like uh, have people take pictures of him. He was always the one taking pictures of his family. But we took him from here to there. And now, you know what? His kids know him as a kind of happy dad. And he wants to be in the pictures before and after. But if he didn't come to me sooner or later, then I wouldn't have been able to do this. And even these bottom teeth, there you can actually I kept those teeth without crowns. We did crowns on the top, but the bottom teeth are all his natural teeth. But we re-landscaped everything so that he could have a functional bite. And this is a picture of um, another patient that I saw a before and after. And his wife said to me, I've got my husband that I knew when I was in my 20s. And so for their Christmas card, she put Jerry on, not with the family, but with Donna and the dynamos from Mamma Mia, because she was just so thrilled and he was so happy. And his smile and his gesture and his posture and his face just looked so different. So we've already talked about headaches are not normal. And um, I just want to check my timing for us. Um, this is a gentleman who was taking Tylenol uh, 3, 12 of them a day, and he ended up having uh, so much uh, pain that finally his physician said, maybe you should go see Dana and see what she can do. So we did some orthodontics and uh, leveled his bite, bite into a better way, and now he doesn't have to take any Tylenol 3 at all. And the quality of his life is so much better. So who's to know? Who ca what causes what and at what intensity. Some of us are so sensitive that we can feel every little thing and other of us, bulldozer can run over us and we're fine, right? And so 
it's really important that we have a great foundation with alignment and expansion. And in my book, I, you see the pictures of narrow arches versus wide arches. And today we talk about teeth like a beautiful rainbow. Because if you see a rainbow in the sky, what do you do? You stop and you look. And if someone's beside you, what do you do? You say, hey, look at the rainbow. And then two people stop, or three people stop, and look at the beautiful rainbow. So when you see a person with a beautiful smile, you're probably prone to look at them a little bit more than someone else. But we have to make sure that the smile is beautiful and can be sustained. And it's all about the force that is exerted on them. So you can see here, if the, camp, if the nail is uh, at a different angle, then you're going to not get the stable response, but you're going to cause vibration of the tooth and gum recession and fracture and cracking. So we talk about stable arches because over the centuries, uh, horses and armies went across these, they built bridges, they put all sorts of supplies on these bridges, the water ran through these aqueducts, and yet the, sta the arches stayed stable. So today, upstairs, we have this technology called Itero element standing. And we can scan your teeth in about three minutes, and we can see where are the forces on your teeth, and are you prone to losing your teeth or destroying your teeth, or is it heavier or too heavy, or what is the issue, and what could a simulation be? And it's really fascinating for me before, I could never even see these inside someone's mouth, because I can see the outsides of the teeth, and I can look on the surface, but I couldn't see how the the forces really exerted themselves. So now we have the technology of the red and the light blue and the green to say, obviously red is more dangerous, those teeth are getting more forces, and this person was saying, I was having so much pain here, do I need a root canal, blah, blah, blah. And no, we can just modify the way the teeth are positioned or modify the bite a little bit and get you into a more comfortable place. So this was an example of a before and after, and you can see how the face changed so much, and that was her after smile, and again, narrow, wide, without extractions. So, and here's just another one, recent one. This gentleman came, and after about 18 months, that's where we got him. And then he said, well, this tooth is a little crowded. I said, well, that's kind of the shape of your teeth. So we just did some quick mock-up bonding, nothing else. But you see how the smile changed even more? And so we're we took a photo of that, and that's our next plan, is we'll just get him in for a couple of hours and do a small modifications without any tooth reduction. And he's going to have an amazing smile. Or he'll greet the world in a totally different way than when he first came in. So it's really exciting for me here. By widening and broadening, we can see that the yellow is wider, the airway opens up. You're all experts at this now. <laughs> and um, again, this was many years ago I did this case, but... He had to get a new corporate photo, again, a virtual nose change. <laughs> no extra charge. And leveling of the t face. And this was a case that I gained my mentorship at. How we opened up the bite, how you see the top teeth are not overlapping the bottom as much, and that they're standing up straighter. And this woman writes me a note saying, thanks for changing my face, because it was not only my mouth, but my whole life has changed. And I want to thank you so much. And it's just a pleasure to be able to work with someone like this. And so we did orthodontics, but I set up the case in such that I didn't even have to give her freezing to do these veneers, because her teeth weren't in good shape, so she needed more. But we didn't even have to do local anesthetic. We hardly took tooth structure away. We could build upon tooth. And that's a goal. Keep what we've got, and let's maximize our potential. So, yeah, this woman, she looks 20 years younger, but it was like three years later. <laughs> so it was a 23-year age reversal. So I just want to, we're running out of time, and it can start at a very early age. This is my daughter, and we took her through different phases to get her. And people always tell her she has beautiful teeth, and they are all her natural teeth, but the teeth were mal-shaped, so we had to do some veneers, and I don't usually do it, but since she was my daughter and I knew I could take responsibility, I did it. But you can see how these teeth were short, and they just came in kind of barrel-shaped in spaces and a deep bite. And uh, everyone says, you have such a beautiful smile. And it reflects who she is, and she isn't afraid of smiling, which is a huge gift. But it doesn't even have to be extensive work, and just be some, sometimes some straight bonding three hours later, and that's what we can achieve. So, um, yeah, just happy faces, happy lives. This gentleman, uh, we did some orthodontics, and then he wanted all sorts of veneers, and he said to his sister in New York City, come into me at Saks Fifth Avenue, and they stood at the cosmetic counter, and he said, watch what happens. 
And in, um, within 30 seconds, five women came over and said, how can I help you? He said, I used to have to stand at the counter and nobody would come see me. And now he's just so proud. He actually has a mirror on his desk that he always looks at himself. And he tells me, oh, I went golfing with my buddies and they had their work done and theirs doesn't look as good as mine, so he's always smiling. But it's, it's a bonus, right? So this is the old style machine that we use for scanning and upstairs it creates a digital hard copy of, of teeth if we have to do some restorative work or even uh, create um, trays for Invisalign. This is the new one that we have at, at our booth and we're happy to do these digital scans just to see where the force load is and what's going on for your teeth and to t just make sure that you don't have to go through major transitions. And uh, this, as you've noticed, I've shown before and afters. So this is, uh, the first picture is actually before, not after. It's reversed, but that's because this woman, and she's given me permission to share the story, she had a life-threatening event where her body basically shut down and she was in life support for a while. And so when you look at the teeth, you can see how they got whittled away because they would give her the sugar swabs in her mouth to give her saliva and you know, not good hygiene and, and so much acidity in her system. And you can see on the bottom teeth at the side how they became very small little teeth. So and she said, do whatever you have to do. So we did this. She wanted white teeth. That's where we got her to in one month's time. And now she's been sent back by her company to do a Harvard MBA. But I don't think that she would have had the confidence nor the recognition by her company to be a leader if she hadn't done this work. So she had the gestalt knowing that she deserved to have it, to be able to have the life that she chose to. And this is, she actually originally had oral cancer at the age of 39, and she had a little boy who was a year and a half old. And the surgeon said to her, don't worry. When your son is graduating from medical school, you will be there. He said, don't worry, I'm the best, and I will make sure that you will be there when your son is graduating. But, you know, those little words of wisdom and those beliefs in your healthcare provider, of people that work with you, are so fundamentally important. Um, and that carried her through. So, uh, we have run out of time. I want to be respectful for the next speaker, but I don't see them here. But, um, and I want to be respectful of your time. Healthy food, uh, it's all in my book, and I'm happy to give you the e-book. But just stay healthy, eat real food, don't eat dehydrated foods. They're all sugar-based. Be aware of the saliva pH. And the most important thing is we all, a lot of people drink lemon juice. Please brush your teeth first and then drink what you want, but don't drink, brush your teeth after because the acid actually erodes your teeth. And uh, there's different aids that we go through. We give out these Curaprox brushes. They're from Europe now. They're a premium brush. They have 5,460 5, bristles per brush. They're made out of polyester so that they don't hold bacteria load. And um, they're a beautiful brush, and so we have those in our practice now that I can help people. D different dentifrices are uh, important because some of them, especially the whitening ones, actually wear away our enamel, so we have to be careful of what we use. But this Remin is a product I love. It has four ingredients, and also with a medical um, hydroxyapatite that remineralizes tooth structure. I want everybody to have their healthiest and best way. And in the beginning, I... W um, it's still a big passion of mine is the safe protocol of how we remove silver mercury fillings. And here you can see the difference of a, a silver mercury tooth and then a white tooth. And um, basically the idea is, is that this is an electron microscope of a material that isn't healthy. Are you speaking next? Okay, so I'm wrapping up. Thank you. Um, but anyways, we just want to take it that people stay healthy and that's removed, so that the body can be healthy through a specific protocol. And uh, we just go through and make sure that we get nothing into the system. And we devise, it's a lot of looking fast, <laughs> befores and afters. And uh, I have an article that's published, so you be ha welcome to get it or ask us for it online. And, uh, but most importantly, it has to be a place where you can talk to your healthcare practitioner and know that they care about you and that you are heard for what you need to have done. And uh, keep your smile good until 120. So we celebrate kids so they can have fun in the dental office as well. Thank you for your attention.